Hi guys, sound check. We will start in a minute. I guess again, I see that, okay, there are fewer and fewer participants during the seminar. <laughs> I believe we have a lot of deadlines now, as I may guess. Yes, we do. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, that's not an, that's not an issue. That's why I don't want to, uh, you, you know how to say, it. I don't want to uh, check your tendency because you, you know how to spend your time better than I do. So if you don't have time to come here or if you don't want, it's your choice, it, it's okay. So the only thing that matters is how to teach you. So if it helps you to learn something, that's perfectly fine. So that's why I don't like all this stuff with attendance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because we are not in a kindergarten. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a lot of st stuff to discuss today. Yeah. By the way, are there any questions before we start? Just in case, any kind of questions regarding the course, regarding the material we already had, etc. Okay, so uh, yeah, today we have um, a lot of computational stuff to discuss, and uh, we want to discuss uh, the ways to compute Grobner bases. Uh, we want to compute the Grobner bases. We want to start solving different problems using Grobner bases. So I want to demonstrate how to use them. So that was the reason why I want to postpone all the proofs for the last lecture. Because if I prove everything today, then the next time, uh, we, well, first of all, we, we don't have material for the, uh, for the homework for today. And the second, um, we won't have time to discuss all this stuff uh, because, yeah, the end is near. We have to be prepared for exams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, okay, so let's start with this simple thing. So consider the polynomial rings in three variables, uh, four variables. Sorry, x, y, z, and w. And let's take any lexicographical order like this. Uh, let's check if a uh, set is a Grobner basis or not. Let's say x plus y and z plus w. So this is the set. So do you remember the, so do you, do you remember how to apply uh, the book back on your criterion in this case? Or should I recall you? Is there anyone who understand how to apply the Bookberger criterion to this set.
Okay, should I recall the so Bulgarian criteria? we need criteria? to find uh, as an S polynomial. Yeah, we need to find S polynomials for each pair of polynomials. Here we have just two polynomials, so we just compute one S polynomial, and then we have to check if it's uh, reducible to zero. Okay? okay. So this is our G1. This is our G2. Now let me underline the leading terms. So since x is larger than y, this is the leading term of the first polynomial, and this is the leading term of the second polynomial. So now we, uh, the, uh, in order to check if this is a Grobner basis or not, we have to compute all possible S polynomials. In this case, there is only one S polynomial. We want to reduce it uh, with respect to the set G itself. We check if this is zero or not. If the result is zero, then this is a Grobner basis. If the result is not zero for at least one pair, but here is just one uh, pair, uh, then this is not a Grobner basis. Okay, let's try. So what is the S polynomial? Well, we take the first polynomial, we take the, the second polynomial, and now we want to multiply uh, the leading term of this guy uh, by Z and the leading term of this guy by X. Why? Because we compute the least common multiple of the leading terms. The least common multiple is X times Z. So, in order to get uh, the, link, uh, the least common multiple, we multiply the first one by z, the second one by x, and then we subtract uh, from, the first, uh, from the first expression the second one, and uh, this subtraction cancels the leading terms, because here we have z, zx and here xz, so after subtraction, the result of the leading term is zero, and we will get zy uh, minus xw. So this is the S polynomial of G1, G2. Are there any questions uh, regarding how we computed the S polynomial? Is it clear? Can we, could we do it in, in uh, another way around? So x, is x multiplied by z plus v plus w minus z multiplied by x plus y. Uh, so z, z, z g2 minus x g1. Z. Oh, no, 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 uh, X, G2 minus oh, Z2. Okay, yeah, 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 of course, you can do this. So you compute just G, S polynomial for G2, G1. It just uh, will be minus S polynomial of G1, G2, but uh, it, it's enough well, to compute its uh, S polynomial for at least one pair, because if this is reducible to zero, then this also is reducible to zero. Uh -huh. So the difference, the only difference here is uh, the sign. It doesn't matter. So you can do it uh, in in the way you want. Moreover, uh, when you, uh, when you compute the result and you see that you want to switch a sign, just switch the sign because it means that you just multiply as polynomial by minus one. Or if you have some coefficients like two and two here, just divide by two. It means that you consider one over two of your uh, poly as polynomial and the result of the reduction well it's either zero or not it doesn't depend on the choice of the coefficient so you have this option to change coefficients as, as, as you wish so now we'll, we need to reduce uh, this um, s polynomial with respect to our polynomials okay let's try well uh, what are the options? Well, first of all, we can re reduce the first sum with respect to the second polynomial, or we can reduce the second sum with respect to the first polynomial. Which one do you like? The first or the second? The second. Oh, the second because it's okay, good. let's try to reduce the second. So if we reduce the second, we use x plus y. Okay, so uh, how, do we, how do we reduce? Well, it simply means that we replace x by minus y, okay? So the result will be this. So I just multiply by w, this guy, and, and add to this expression. And the result will be this. And now, uh, as you can see, um, well, I cannot reduce this term anymore, anymore because it's not divisible by z or x. Uh, 
but I can reduce the first summon by the second polynomial. So I can reduce uh, what was z plus w. Z plus w. So I multiply uh, by y and subtract, but it simply means that I replace z by minus w. So I'll get minus w y plus y w, and this is zero. So after I took uh, two reduction, the result is zero. So by uh, by the Bogdanov criterion, this set is a Grobner basis. Are there any questions regarding this computation? And isn't it always the case that this polynomial equals zero because we just take some specific uh, multiplications? Uh, so we take the leading terms are prime. That's what you mean? Uh, no, I mean, isn't it on, always the case that s polynomial equals zero? Because no, we take... I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute an example when it's not zero. Uh, so, yeah, that's a good question. But uh, before uh, going to your question, I just want to um, underline one uh, specific trick. Here, you see the, uh, the leading terms are co-prime. Here, x and here, z. There is no common multiple for x and z. Uh, so, in this case, we don't need to compute this. Uh, we can say that the s polynomial automatically, so, well, we know that in case x and z are, well, when the leading terms are co-prime, the s polynomial will be reducible to zero. So, so you don't have to compute. You, you just can, uh, you can mention this fact. So in this case, uh, since x and, and z are co-prime, uh, then as g1, g2 reduces to zero with respect to g. So this is automatic. This holds automatically. But we check this manually, but you don't have to check in this specific case when the leading terms are co-prime. Now, an example of a set uh, where the leading, uh, where the S polynomial is not reducible to zero. Let's say uh, I will switch, I will change the polynomial ring. I want to shrink the amount of variables. And let's say we use this order. And now, Let's take the polynomials x, y minus one and y, z minus one. This is your g1, this is your g2, okay? And these are the leading terms. Now let's try to compute s polynomial as g1, g2. Well, the LCM is x, y, z. So I have to multiply this guy by z and this guy by x, and then subtract. And then the result will be x minus y. Okay? Uh, okay, now I see. And you see, uh, well, the reason why it happens is because you cancel the leading terms. And now all the other terms are strictly smaller than the leading terms of your initial polynomials. Shouldn't it be x minus z? Oh, it's x minus z, you're right, you're right, yes. Uh, uh, you're totally right. That's my mistake. X minus Z. Yeah. So you see, uh, so the reason why it happens, you, you, you can't, uh, because you cancel the leading term. Now there is nothing you can reduce by this guy. So this is not a um, Grobner basis. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And by the way, here, it doesn't matter which ordering on the variables you take. Uh, well, these guys are always the leading terms, and this guy is always um, an S polynomial. It doesn't depend on the ordering of the variables. So, no matter which order you take, this set is not a Grobner basis. Okay, but now let me show you a different. Ah, by the way, let's try to compute the Grobner basis uh, containing uh, these elements, okay? So let me uh, recall that we have this set x, y minus one, y, z minus one. So how does Bogberger algorithm work? You, you take all possible s polynomials. Here we just have one s polynomial. It's x min minus z. 
and we try to reduce it with respect to g. Well, it will be x minus z because it's not reducible. Now, it's not zero. Since it's not zero, we, we should add it to the previous set. So now we consider set g1, which consists of the previous, uh, sorry, of the previous polynomials. And we add this polynomial x minus z. And now we should repeat the procedure. We should compute all possible s polynomials and try to reduce them to zero. So let me underline all the leading terms for clarity. Now, you see, if we compute the leading terms of these guys, we will get exactly this polynomial. And we can reduce uh, S polynomial of these guys by X minus Z. Well, because each polynomial reduces to zero by itself. So we, uh, these sets, uh, so we, we don't have to compute uh, S polynomial for the guys we already considered. So the only S polynomials we have to compute are these ones. So we should compute S polynomials for the new guys in our set and the old guys. And if we had several new guys, we, we would compute S polynomials for all pairs of the new guys. But since we added only one polynomial, we just need to compute S polynomial for this guy and uh, the old ones. So the blue one will go to zero automatically. Now, so here we have to check two polynomials. Well, let's say it's G1, G2, and G3. So we have to check S polynomial of G1 and G3, and we have to check S polynomial of G2 and G3, okay? Are there any questions uh, until this moment? Okay, but now let's look at G2 and G3. Their leading terms are y, z, and x. They are co-prime. There is no uh, common multiple. So this, since, since these are co-prime, we know that this guy will be reduced to zero with respect to g. So we don't need to check it. So this uh, simplifies the computation. So we don't have to check this s polynomial. So now we have to check only one s polynomial. Let's compute this S polynomial. Let me go here. Oh. So the first polynomial is XY minus one. The second polynomial is X minus Z. So the least common multiple of the leading terms is XY. So we have to multiply this by Y and subtract. And as the result, we will get YZ minus one. And this is exactly G2, and this can be reduced by G2 to zero. So this S polynomial is also reduced to zero. So all possible S polynomials are reducible to zero. So the set G1 itself is a Grobner basis. So this is the set we were looking for. So this is the answer. Are there any questions regarding this procedure? Okay, so just in case, let me uh, summarize what was, what was happening here. We started with a set of two polynomials. We fixed this order. We, 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 found, we found out that this set is not a Grobner basis. And then we applied the Buchberger algorithm. And after one step of the Buchberger algorithm, uh, we got a Grobner basis. And just in case, these uh, guys and these guys, they generate exactly the same idea. I will explain a little bit later uh, why it's important, uh, but for now, I just want to switch to a different example of a Grobner basis when it depends on the choice of the, of the uh, of electrographical order. Okay, so let's try a different example. Now, uh, again, the, the ring of polynomials is the ring of polynomials in free variables with rational coefficients. Uh, by the way, uh, well, here I discuss rational coefficients, but uh, just in case, all this theory is coefficient independent. So I could switch to any field here, like ZP or F4 or any other field. So 
it's just for obscurity purpose. Like you can use any other field just for obscurity purpose to make a uh, problem looks harder, but the field doesn't matter. Like only coefficient matter, or only the, the variables matter. Okay, well, the computation will be different, but I mean, in general, it doesn't matter. So now let's g1 be x square y minus y square and g2 be x square z minus z square. And I want to, uh, to choose two different orders. Let me figure this one. This will be lex1 and this will be lex2. So lex in, in the case of lex1, z is the highest possible than y than x. And in case of lex2, x is the highest possible than y than z. Okay, so if I use the first order, didn't work. If I use the first order, then what are the leading terms here? Could you name me the leading terms? Which one is highest? Which one is higher? This one or this one is the leading term here? The left one. This one. Yeah. If the order is this. No, no, oh. Uh, ah, no. So the, then the, 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 right right one. One, the right one. Yeah. When we, then, uh, yeah, then this guy is higher. Because first we compare the Z component. In both cases, the degree of Z is zero. Then we can see, compare the Y component. And here it's two, so it's higher. So for the lex one, this is the highest uh, term. And in the second polynomial, z square. Are you agree with me? Yep. Okay, so now, as you can see, the leading terms are co-prime. So it means that well, you can compute it by hands, but you will get that the S polynomial is reducible to zero. So this is a Grobner basis. So G1 and G2 is a Grobner basis for Lex1. Okay. Now let's try to compute uh, whether it's a Grobner basis or not for the second order. In this case, we have a different leading term. The leading term now is the one underlined by the red color. And now they are not co-prime, so we have to compute the S polynomial by hands. So let's try to compute the S polynomial. So I write the first polynomial down in brackets, then the second polynomial. Now, the least common multiple of the leading terms is what? It's x squared, y, z. So here we, have, we should multiply by z, and here we should use y, and then subtract one from another one. And the result is y, z squared minus z, y squared. Okay? The question. Is it reducible to zero or not? Let me no, show. it's not. It's not because uh, neither of the terms is divisible by the leading terms of the initial polynomial, so it's not it's not reducible to zero. In particular, this means that G1, G2 is not a Grobner basis with respect to uh, Lex uh, two. So, in particular. G1, G2 is not a Grobner basis for the order Lex2. So what this example shows, and actually if you add this, I believe it becomes um, a Grobner basis. So this is the only polynomial you have to add in order to get the Grobner basis. So this example shows you that the choice of the order um, affect the fact that your set is a Grobner basis or not. So for a specific order, it's a Grobner basis, for other order, it's not. Uh, 
and it's actually easier to use a shorter Grodner basis uh, when you compute uh, rather than a larger one. And sometimes the problem you want to solve doesn't depend on the choice of the, uh, of the other. So it's better to choose, uh, well, a better order. Well, it it's, sounds silly, but well, just choose a better order and then your computation will be simpler. And sometimes it's clear how to find a better order. For example, in this case, you see, uh, well, why did I choose this uh, order? Because if I choose these as my uh, order, then these guys are the leading terms and now they're co-prime and that's it. And actually I can use a different uh, order, ordering of the variables z then x then y. Then this guy will be leading term of the second polynomial, but in, in this case, this becomes the leading term, but they are still co-prime and we automatically get a Grodner basis. So that's not the only order where this trick works. Okay, this is the first thing I wanted to discuss. Are there any questions regarding this? Okay, um, just in case, um, is there anyone who is not sure that he can apply a Buchberger algorithm and get a Grobner basis? Okay, so let's try to compute something else. Um, well, let's try to compute this. There is a viral problem in YouTube saying like only one hundredth part of a person of all people in the world can solve this problem. If you solve it, you're a genius, etc., etc., etc. Well, there are a lot of such problems in YouTube, but this is one of them. And I want to solve a simpler version of the problem. Well, let's say x plus one equals one x squared plus y squared equals 2, then can you compute x cubed plus y cubed? Well, the original problem uh, is exactly the same, but they use uh, three variables. So the problem is exactly the same, but it's computationally harder. So I just want to demonstrate how to solve these kind of problems using Grobner basis. So you have these two expressions, you know the value of the first and the second expression and you want to compute the, uh, the value of the third expression. So I want to demonstrate how to use Grobner basis in order to compute this. And actually you can compute any uh, higher power like x4 plus y4 etc. But I just want to demonstrate this using the third power. So is the problem clear? Do you have any questions? Okay, so what do we do? First of all, let's introduce our polynomial. So I just want to move everything to the left hand side and denote the left hand side by polynomials. So g1 will be x, y, x plus y minus 1, g2 will be x squared plus y squared minus 2, and now I want uh, to compute g3 which is x3 plus y, uh, y3. Let me show you, let me explain the method. The method is simple. So you start with the set G1, G2. And you replace it by the Grobner basis. Uh, what is important here, um, if you take any pair of X and Y satisfying these conditions, then G1 and G2 are zero for these guys. So if x and y satisfy uh, satisfy uh, the first two equations, one and two, then g1 of, of x y equals zero and g2 of x y equals zero. Well, this is just uh, an obvious claim because we just defined g1 and g2, but this, but then it implies that if you multiply g1 and g2 by any other polynomial and consider this expression, this expression is also equals zero for 
any uh, for any solution of the first two equations. So this simply means that for every polynomial from this ideal, the, uh, the, the result of your computation is zero. So I mean, again, for every f from this ideal generated by g1, g2, f of x, y, the, the solutions of one and two will be zero. In part, well, in particular, if you compute the Grobner basis of this uh, uh, family, and then for every polynomial of the Grobner basis, you have exactly the same relation. So if you substitute the solution of one and two into each polynomial in the Grobner basis, the result will be zero. So this is the first observation. Are there any questions regarding this observation? I'm not saying why I need this, but you will see it in a moment. But just in case, are there any questions regarding this? Okay, now let me explain why do I need all of this. So what I am going to do next, I want to consider a reduction of G3 with respect to the Grobner basis. But what does reduction do? Reduction replaces G3 uh, by G3 minus, uh, let's say G prime will be a, oh, let's say, I just want to change uh, the notation. I don't want to name it G3, let's say just G. Uh, because I want to reserve G3 for a different polynomial. So then you just subtract, subtract a polynomial like this. Okay, where G prime is a polynomial of G. But then if you, and, and you will get some polynomial, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, I, I need a, a new name like H. But in this case, G of X, Y, is equal to h of x, y, where x and y are the solutions of one and two. Why? Because if you sub substitute uh, x and y in, in h, then this becomes zero because as I already mentioned, every polynomial from the ideal generated by g1 and g2 gives you zero after the substitution. And the Grobner basis belongs to this ideal. So if you make reduction, you don't change the value of your polynomial at any point um, um, from, well, from the set of solutions of the initial two uh, equations. So if you reduce your polynomial G to a constant, it simply means that G of X, Y equals this constant. So this is how to compute uh, this expression. So uh, just in case, so let me uh, summarize the whole method. So we start with these equations. We move everything to the left and define our polynomials. Then we will compute the Grobner basis uh, for this set of polynomials. Well, we first have to choose an order, but we fix an order, then we compute a Grobner basis. And then we reduce G by this Grobner basis. And at the end, we will get a constant, and this constant will be the value of this expression. Are there any questions regarding the math? Okay, let's see how simple it is to be a genius and solve a viral problem. So let's try to compute all the ingredients we need. So let me um, recall what do we have here? So formally, we deal with polynomials. How we have just two variables here, and g1 is x plus y minus one, g2 is x squared plus y squared minus two, and the polynomial g. So oh, let me let's say f. I want to switch the name. Okay, is this guy? And we want to compute f. So let's try to compute the Grobner basis of this. Uh, uh, to polynomial g1 and g2. So the leading terms are this. So let's try to compute the s polynomial. Okay, so it will be x squared plus y squared minus 2. And here x plus y minus 1. Um, so 
the least common multiple is x squared, so we multiply it by x, subtract. So at the end, we will get uh, y squared minus 2 minus xy plus x. Okay, and now I want to reduce this with respect to our Grobner basis. Okay, so let's see. What can we reduce? We can reduce these two monomials. Uh, let me underline them by the red color. And just in case, this is two. This is this is a number. Okay. So how do we reduce? We simply um, replace x by one minus y during this reduction. So we get y square minus two minus. Here we will get one minus y y plus one minus y. This is a reduction with respect to x plus y minus one. Okay, let's let's see what we get here. Um, this guy and this guy, we will get two y square. Then we will get this guy and this guy. Uh, minus 2y and then we also have um, this guy and this guy it's minus 1. So the s polynomial is 2y square minus 2y minus 1 and it's not reducible to 0 so the initial set is not a Grodner basis so and now I just so this is our reminder, and I will replace this uh, reminder by, uh, by 1 over 2r. So I will consider y squared minus y minus 1 over 2. And on the second step, I should consider this set g1, which is x plus y minus 1, and here x squared plus y squared minus 2, and this guy. So it doesn't matter if you rescale your polynomials during the Wolfberger algorithm. So now we know, so let me indicate the leading terms here. Okay, and now we computed the S polynomial of these guys and uh, uh, it, it will be automatic, well, it's, it will be reducible by this polynomial because when well, you compute S polynomial of these guys, you will, you will get this expression and then you repeat this reduction we did here and you will get this polynomial and then you just reduce this polynomial by this one and the result will be zero. So the S polynomial for the first two guys will be reducible to zero. And now you should check S polynomials for the new guy and the old ones, but as you can see the living terms of the new one and the old ones are co-prime, so the S polynomials will go to zero automatically, and hence by the both barrier criterion, this is the Grobner basis you are looking for. This is the, the Grobner basis we wanted to compute. So are there any questions regarding this computation, why this is a Grobner basis? Okay, so now, the step, the phase number two of our algorithm, we should take the polynomial f, which is the sum of cubes. And we want to reduce it by the Grobner basis g1. Okay, let's, let's try doing this. So x cubed plus y cubed, let's try to reduce it with respect to x squared plus y squared minus two. So I would like to reduce the first term. So I want to do this explicitly in order to explain uh, how, how it works. x cubed plus y cubed minus x times x squared plus y squared minus two. So we cancel these terms and we will get y cubed minus x y squared plus 2x. Okay, and now I want to reduce this by x plus y minus 1. This simply means that I replace x by 1 minus y, so I will get y cubed minus 
1 minus y y square plus 2 1 minus y let's see what we will get um, so here we have 2 y cube this and this then we will get um, minus Uh, one second. Uh, did I make a mistake? Just in case, I just want to see if I. S no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, no, uh, minus y square minus 2y plus 2. <clears> hmm. <throat> um, I've got, um, I got an issue. I have a, an extra term that should not be here. Uh, oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Because, the, okay, it's fine, it's fine. No, there is no extra term. That's okay, that's okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I was confused. So, okay, this is uh, how the reduction works here. Um, are there any questions regarding this computation? So now we have a third term. We need to reduce with respect to y square minus y minus one over two. So, but this process is just a division algorithm. You usually Euclidean the division algorithm. So you should subtract y time two y minus y square minus y minus one over two from this guy, and you will get so. I just don't want to repeat this polynomial here, so I just repeat this polynomial here and subtract this expression. And then we will cancel the leading term. And uh, what, what will we get? We will get minus y square minus 2y plus 2, and then plus 2y square uh, plus y. This is what we have. And the result is y square minus y plus 2. And then we can reduce it again by y square minus y minus 1 over 2. It means that we replace this expression by 1 over 2. So this will be uh, 2 plus 1 over 2, which is 5 over 2. Okay, this, and this means that this expression equals 5 over 2. So this is how it works. So at the end, we will stop by the way where it is. So the answer here is five over two. And you compute this for any number of variables, or you can extend this to three variables, and uh, then you have to choose three questions. So in case of three variables, you fix x plus y plus z equals one, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals two, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed equals three, and then you compute uh, the fourth power, the sum of the fourth powers, using exactly the same method. Well, it's computationally more intense, but basically this is exactly the same procedure, and it works in exactly the same manner as we did it here. So this is the way how to compute expressions if you know the value of other expressions using Grobner basis. So you don't have to find x and y explicitly. Well, in this simple case, you can uh, solve the first equation, the first pair of equations. You can substitute x into the second expression and solve uh, for y. Uh, and in this case, this gives you just a quadratic equation, and it's simple to solve it. But uh, that was not the point. If you have uh, the case of three variables, then trying to do in a similar way, you will get like an, exp uh, an expression of the first, uh, an equation of the first degree uh, or the third degree. And it's not easy to uh, find explicitly roots uh, of the system. So, uh, but here, as you can see, this method allows you to compute the third expression without explicitly solving for X and Y. So this is the power of this, of this method. It may be hard to explicitly find uh, the variables x, y, and z, etc., etc., but it's easy to compute um, an expression you, you are given. 
So this is how it works. Are there any questions regarding this method? Should I explain anything in detail in more details? Okay, so I hope it was clear. Uh, so, actually, I yeah. have uh, tried to calculate it explicitly and I've received a different answer. Okay, so this simply means that at least one of us did a mistake. Yeah, and I hope that's my mistake. Yeah, uh, well, just five or two is the correct answer. Uh, you may check it using any system like Wolfram Alpha. Okay, or... and like, what is the solution for this system? Which Isn't one? it one, uh, one plus minus uh, the square root of three divided by two? Let's try to compute. I didn't actually compute it explicitly. So, um, okay, let's. Let's, let's compute. Oops. Oh, that was your red. Yeah, um, okay, uh, no problem. Uh, so let's try to compute. So x plus y equals one, and x squared plus y squared equals two. So we, let's say uh, y equals one minus x. I just want to deal with x instead of y, and we substitute in the second x squared plus 1 minus x squared equals 2. So now I want to expand this expression. So we will get x squared plus x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 2 equals 0. So we have x squared 2x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And now we want to find um, our x so in this case, um, so x squared minus x minus one over two equals zero. As you can see, this is exactly the same expression we've got here. Ah, uh -huh. okay, okay. Just in case, that's uh, that's not a coincidence. Uh, th 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 this is how it should be. So now we need to compute the discriminant. So we take uh, b square minus 4ac, uh, which means 1 square uh, minus 4 minus uh, I, I one. Counted, yeah. Yeah. So it, it must be plus. So yeah, it will be 3. Yeah. And now it's uh, minus b plus minus square, square root of d over 2a. So here it's 1 plus minus uh, square root of 3 over 2. So this is uh, no, I see. It. I, I just messed it up with uh, over two. I thought it was one plus minus square root of three over two. Yeah, okay. Okay, sorry. No problem. Sorry. No problem. And here, uh, these are your x and y. If one expression is x, then the second expression is y. So x is one plus uh, square root of three over two, and y then one minus square root uh, of three over two, or vice versa. And then you just substitute these expressions into uh, x cube and y cube, and you you can compute, and the result will be five over two. And I don't think this well, it's doable. It's definitely doable here, because everything uh, can be computed explicitly. But as you may guess, when you switch to the case of free variables, it will be almost impossible to compute because the expression for a root of a polynomial of a third degree is something terrible. So, yeah, okay, so thank you. Okay, so I hope at least now it's clear uh, why this method is used. Yeah, and, and actually um, the systems uh, like Wolfram well Alpha, they use exactly this method to compute a value of expression when you know uh, some restrictions on the initial data. Uh, the only difference in general case uh, is this. Well, in general case, when you reduce G, uh, the result of the reduction would not be constant. Uh, this simply means that uh, for different solutions, X and Y of the initial system, uh, the value of the expression uh, X cube, let's say, well, here it's X cube plus Y cube, but in general, some uh, other expression. Well, in general, the value of this expression need not be a constant. So it may depend 
on the choice of the solution in the initial system. Here, uh, the fact that we can reduce g to constant, so we can reduce this x cubed plus y cubed to the constant, means that this expression doesn't depend on the choice of the solution of the system. But it may happen that it depends. Okay, that was one example. Um, give me a second, where we, uh, I, where is this list of all the shit problems coming in guys? I have a little bit news for you. <laughs> I don't know where I put the shit with the problems. <laughs> I was so excited to compute this. Okay, okay, Let, let's do it by, let's use my memory. Okay, uh, I hope I, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, here it is, sorry. Um, now, let's try to apply this procedure um, for, to solve a different problem. Well, there is um, another problem of um, elimination of variables. So variable elimination. Uh, just, by the way, I don't remember how many letters L should be in this word. So if your eyes are right now. If it now, is elimination, then one. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure about amount of letters here, yeah, it should be elimination. Okay, thank you. Um, now, um, what is uh, the problem um, of elimination of variables? So let me show you some uh, example uh, of, a, of a problem I want to solve. So suppose I have, um, well, everything here should work over a field of complex numbers. So I want to, I produce a map from C to C square. And it works like this. A variable T goes to a vector T square T cube. So it simply means that X equals T square and Y equals T cube. So I have uh, a map from C square to C, uh, from C to C square. Here, all numbers are complex numbers. Well, you could do this with real numbers and it has a good picture, but uh, well, in general, this procedure works only uh, for complex numbers because of some uh, problems that of the real numbers you, you cannot solve any polynomial question. So some arguments do not work. But just in case you may think of a real uh, very valid picture here. So this simply means that you have a curve uh, on a plane. Well, when you specify the real numbers here instead of the complex numbers. And the curve is given parametrized, you, you have like x is equal to t square and y is equal to t cube. But now you want to, so the picture here, so if you, if you allow me to write a picture like this, so this is your x axis and this is your y axis. And now uh, let me think, um, okay, it should, the curve should look like this. Well, here you see the picture for uh, the case of the real numbers. So this is how I draw, I draw this picture. I just think of it as, I just replace C by the real numbers and th this is what is, uh, what is drawn here. Uh, but now I want to define this curve using an equation. I just want to write down some function of x, y equals zero such that this uh, function defines exactly this curve. So how to find this function f? Well, in this particular case, it's, it's very simple. You can uh, see that if you raise x to the power of three and y to the power of two, then the right-hand side is the same. Uh, so this means that x to the power of three equals y to the power of two is the desired equation. But there is a general method of um, using, uh, using a Grobner basis, uh, allowing you to 
find such an equation for any map given by any um, any ex polynomial expressions here. And I want to demonstrate how it works uh, using uh, Grobner weights. So this, uh, so we will solve a problem which is purely algebraic. It doesn't use any, uh, any geometric intuition. But this geometric intuition is needed in order to understand what we're actually doing. So let me show you how to solve this problem using Grobner basis. So in case of, but just in case, is it clear what's going on here? Are there any questions regarding what's going on here? Well, it's interesting when you ask two opposite questions and in both cases, there is no answer. Uh, so it's kind of clear. Okay, that's good, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so because yeah, it, it would be worse if it's unclear total, like then what I'm doing is trash. Like if I am unable to teach you, then I'm just shit. <laughs> That's how it not the problem of yours, it's the problem no, of students. It's always the problem of both sides. I mean, um, if you want to learn something, you have to spend time and effort. Yes, but so if you don't achieve anything without spending efforts, but uh, the teacher is the very important ingredient here. If you have a good advisor, then you can achieve the result much quicker and with less pain than if you have no advisor at all or if you have a bad advisor and if you have a bad advisor uh, you it, it may even be worse than having no advisor so uh, i mean if you don't understand something that's basically my fault because uh, um, uh, my task is to teach you if you if you uh, if you if you don't understand what i'm talking about if you uh, if you don't know how to apply the algorithms i explained to you in the lecture and the seminars that's first of all my fault because that was my task to teach you and i didn't succeed so that's how you should think of it when you teach someone okay let's uh, stop uh, this philosophy for a second and let's uh, switch to um, the problem so um okay so in this case, we have, we should consider a polynomial ring with three variables. Uh, the variable x and the y for x and the y coordinates in c square and t uh, for the coordinate here in c. And now, um, so what does it mean? Well, it's simply, uh, well, how you should think of it? You should think of it as a, um, like a space with three coordinates and then uh, the equation x minus t square and y minus t cube, they determine you a graph of the map. So the map from the vertical line to, um, to, this, uh, uh, to this plane uh, is defined by some, well, it de defines you the curve. And you have the graph of, of this curve here. So this is the meaning of these uh, equations. Well, it doesn't matter what the geometric meaning is, but I just want to explain the corresponding geometric meaning of what we are doing. And now, uh, what is the image of, of the curve? We want to project the, uh, this graph uh, to the plane x, y. And this simply means that we want to eliminate the variable t from these expressions. So what we do, we define the ideal Basically, the ideal uh, with this expression defined with this blue curve. And when you project this blue curve here on the plane, this red line corres corresponds to the intersection of this ideal with uh, the polynomial depending on x and y only. Because what does it mean that you want to defi uh, de uh, define your curve um, um, by a function f depending on x and y? It simply means that you want to find um, a, a function in your ideal uh, such that it depends on x and y only. So 
if we find this intersection, all this function will define us uh, the required curve. Yeah, I'm not explaining the details, but I just want to explain the intuition. But formally, now what we do, we just consider this ideal and we want to find uh, this intersection. So this is the reason why this problem of elimination of variables is, is interesting, because it, uh, it serves us uh, this purpose to find uh, uh, an equation defining this curve. Well, okay, now uh, let me fix uh, the order. The lexicographical order must be fixed in this fashion. So the order here doesn't matter, but the variable t must be strictly larger than y and x. And let's try to compute the Grobner basis of this uh, ideal. So we, we should compute the Grobner basis of this ideal and then take all the polynomials depending on y and x only. Okay, uh, let me write uh, these polynomials here. I just want to rewrite them in this way because then the leading terms are here. It doesn't matter, the, the ideal will be the same. So this is your G1, this is your G2, and now uh, we want to compute the S polynomial. So S polynomial of G1 and G2 will be, let's say, uh, this. And I multiply this by T and subtract. And then I will get what? Um, y minus Tx. Okay. And this guy is not reducible by these polynomials. So I have to add this polynomial to, uh, to, the, uh, to my set. So here I will get, so I will get t squared minus x, t cubed minus y. And here I will change the sign because I don't want to, uh, I want it to be the leading term. I want the leading term to be uh, with uh, the, the unit coefficient. Now these are the leading terms and I want to compute uh, all the S polynomials. As before, we only need to compute S polynomials for the new guy with the old ones. So let's try to compute SG1 and SG3. So this guy is G3. Now, what is this? is t squared minus x, and here tx minus y. Uh, now you multiply this by x and this by t and subtract, and at the end you will get uh, ty minus x squared. Okay, uh, and again, as you can see, uh, neither of the terms is divisible by the leading term of these guys, uh, so you cannot reduce it. Uh, and if you compute as g2, g3, uh, you will get t square t cube minus y, and here tx minus y, and you multiply it by x, and you multiply it by t square minus, and the result will be t square y minus xy. Whew, uh, but now you can reduce the first polynomial and you can reduce it by the first polynomial. And if you reduce it by t square minus x, you just simply replace t square by x and you will get x y minus x y and you will get zero. Okay, so only one s polynomial should be added on the next step. So on the next step, let me rewrite all the polynomials t square minus x t cube minus y, tx minus y, and ty minus x squared. So this is the set on the next step. And let me underline the leading terms. And again, we have to compute s polynomials of the new guy with the old ones. Yes, it's a hard work. Now we have to consider uh, three more polynomials. I'll show you later how to simplify all these computations. But I just want you to go through all this pain of computing. T square minus x, ty minus x cube, 
Now we multiply by y, here we multiply by t, we subtract, and, and the result we will get uh, tx cubed minus xy. By, but now we can reduce this by the third polynomial g3, which is this one. We can replace tx here by y, and we will, uh, did I make a mistake just in case? Uh, doesn't look so. Okay, so here we replace tx by y, so we get yx squared minus xy. Uh, just in case, let me check. Well, why is it uh, minus x uh, to the cube? I mean, in the upper line, when you count oh. g1, g4, it's x. Yeah. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. That was a mistake. That's why I was confused. Yeah, so it's like this. That what was confusing me. Thank you for finding that. So yeah, so it goes to zero. You're right. Thank you. So uh, S polynomial of the first one and the last one is this guy, and it's reducible to zero via the third one. Then we can compute the S polynomial of the second one and the fourth one. It will be t cubed minus y, and here ty minus x squared. So yeah, as you can see, everyone can make a mistake. Uh, here it must be y, and here it must be t square. So we subtract one from another one. So now, if we compute, we will get uh, t square y square minus y square. Okay, and we can reduce using again tx minus, uh, minus y. Uh, well, tx minus y. And again, if we, re if we reduce using tx minus y, it means we replace tx by y. So we will get after two reductions. Well, we have to do it in two steps formally, but if we do it, we will get this and the result will be zero. And the, uh, the only thing we, we need to add is the last one, S polynomial, and here we have Tx minus one and Ty minus X squared, Tx minus y and Ty minus X squared. Here we should multiply by y, here we should multiply by X and subtract one from another one, and we will get X cubed minus one squared. And this one depends on x and y only, and it's not reducible by the previous um, as poly, uh, by the previous polynomial, so you cannot reduce it to zero. So on this step, uh, among the three s polynomials, only one is not zero and is not and its um, reminder is not reducible to zero. So you you should add it here. So let me write down all the polynomials again. So you have t square minus x, t cube minus y. Then you have tx minus y, and you have ty minus x, and the new polynomial is, uh, well, the order was taken such that t was larger than y and was larger than x. I should write it like this. I just replaced the order because it doesn't, it, uh, the sign doesn't matter, but now this is the leading term, and I just underlined leading terms. And, um, well, as you can see, now uh, we need to check S polynomial of the new guy with the previous ones. But the leading term is co-prime with the leading terms of the first three ones. So the S polynomial of this guy with these ones will go automatically to zero. So we only have to check the S polynomial for these two ones and the S polynomial as G4, as G5 is this. And we multiply this by T, multiply this by Y, subtract, and in the end we will get um, Tx cubed minus Xy, and we can reduce it via Tx minus Y, so we replace uh, uh, just in case, uh, t tx minus y. Um, 
Oh, come on, did I make a mistake again? Doesn't look, no, it's, it, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. So now uh, we, uh, we replaced, uh, we, um, we reduced this. Uh, should I, probably I should take it, no, I should take this reduction. Yeah, and then we, um, what we get, Oh, come on, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. Uh, wait, wait a second, I don't like this. Somehow we will get, come on, where did I make a mistake? Okay. No, it doesn't look like I, I made a mistake. Okay, uh, okay. So we replace this by um, what t x cube. Um, we replace by y, so we will get x square y minus x y. Okay. Uh, and it's totally wrong. Oh come on. Hmm, give me one second. I don't like this. Maybe I rewrite. Oh. Minus six squared. It should be ty minus six squared. Yeah. Yeah, here was a mistake, but it, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here was a mistake. Yeah, ty minus x square. So here it's also x square. Yeah, well, now now it's okay. So now it reduces to zero. Yeah, that, yeah, because I remember that here it must be zero. Yeah, and the mistake was here. Thank you again. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard work, as you can see. And now we're ready. This is the Grobner basis. So we started with two polynomials and the Grobner basis consists of five polynomials, as you, may, as you can see. Well, and now we should take uh, only polyno uh, the polynomials depending only on X and Y. And there is only one of them, it's Y squared minus X cubed. So hence this, I, if you, I, If I take the intersection of this ideal with uh, the subring generated by x and y, the intersection is generated by y squared minus x cubed. And the geometric meaning of this expression, it, uh, this is the equation defining the curve given by these two expressions. So if you send t, uh, uh, well, if you, well, again, so if you take x to be t square and y to be t cube, then it defines you a curve on a plane, and this plane is given by the equation y square minus x cube equals zero. So this is the way how to compute, um, well, um, an, an expression def defining a curve. It works for any kind of curve. And actually, there is a problem which is considered to be hard when you add a third variable, uh, z equals t to the fourth. And if you open uh, any textbooks and algebraic geometry, and uh, they consider the problem to find the image of this curve to be like an, a problem not accessible by any student. And you always find this asterisk near this problem. But as you can see, if you know the Grobner basis, uh, this problem is not as hard, but the computation is hard. It's pretty intense, but it's clear what to do and how to compute. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry for making two mistakes, <laughs> but at least I hope it was clear what was going on here and how to compute this and the geometric meaning. If you have any questions regarding this process, please ask. Okay.
uh, there is one remark about how to make this computation easier. Well, here at the beginning, we started with two polynomials, t square minus x and t cubed minus y. Uh, let me go, uh, okay, let me go here and write them again. So we started with these guys. And what, what do we want? We want to find a Grobner basis generating the same ideal as these two guys. But before doing this, we can simplify these guys. You see, in this case, you can reduce the second polynomial with respect to the first one. So instead of checking, uh, well, instead of extra expanding this set to a Grobner basis just from the beginning, let, let's just replace, so this is G1 and this is G2, let's reduce G2 with respect to G1. So what will we get? We will get Tx minus y. But in this case, the polynomial, and this will be G2 prime. But in this case, these two guys generate exactly the same ideal as these two guys. Well, because, uh, well, this one can be expressed in terms of this one. This is how it's done here. You, uh, because G, G prime, uh, G2 prime is just G2 minus um, T G1. This is how uh, the elementary reduction works. But then, uh, since G1 is exactly the same here, then if I move everything to the left, then G2 is expressed in terms G1 and G2 prime. So you can express these generators using this one and vice versa, you can express these generators using this one. So they generate exactly the same ideal. So instead of, exp um, instead of expanding this set and finding uh, the Gr a Grobner basis, you can start from this set. But as you look closely here, these two polynomials are polynomials from here, the first one and the third one. So it's simply, so starting with this one simply means that you don't need to consider this second polynomial. And, you, and if you start computation using these polynomials, you'll have fewer cases and the computation uh, will hold uh, faster because you won't have to consider uh, some S polynomials that are unnecessary. And this process uh, I, uh, I apply here is called auto-reduction. Auto it means that you reduce each polynomial with respect to all other polynomials. And it's a very wise, wise thing to do uh, before applying any algorithm. Just make this auto-reduction, apply this auto-reduction to the initial set of polynomials, and this will simplify significantly your problem. And uh, actually, we saw this, uh, uh, well, uh, we, we saw this in a computation using computer. Um, well, actually, the difference is significant. For example, if you, if you do not apply such a process, in, uh, then for some specific examples, you can wait for the result of the computation using modern computers, like modern laptops, uh, you can wait, for example, like two or three hours. And if you apply this kind of um, process at each step of the algorithm, the result can be computed in several seconds. So the difference is huge. So that's why if you want to compute a Grobner basis, even uh, by hands, it's, uh, well, it's a very wise thing to do before um, going to compute a Grobner basis directly, just reduce each polynomial with respect to, another, uh, to the other ones, and you will simplify uh, the problem significantly. So that's uh, one of the tricks you, you can use also. It's, it's, it's really cool to use. It's really helpful. Okay, uh, that's more or less everything I wanted to show you today. That's probably enough algorithms for one seminar. Are there any questions? Okay, 
then if there are no questions then thank you for being here i hope it was clear uh, and interesting and uh, i just want to um, remind you about this consultation during the wednesday it starts at 6 uh, p.m until the last student um well if you have, well if there are no questions then thank you very much and i'll see you next time thank you yeah thank you thank you goodbye, goodbye. goodbye.